Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. And if you would, make sure you fill out that QR or scan that QR code and fill out uh, your attendance or shoot us an email to let us know that you were watching today. If you're at home because you're not feeling well, we certainly hope that you get to feeling back better soon and back here in worship. Um, if you are just uh, joining us for the first time or a regular online viewer, glad that you are here for uh, watching us today. And if there's any way we can be of service to you, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. Let's get going with our opening song for this Trinity Sunday. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. 
the Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. We continue with our confession and absolution. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has had mercy upon us, and has sent His Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you. Old Testament reading for Trinity Sunday is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. 
Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Oh, 
merciful and mighty, both in three persons, blessed Trinity. To you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit, for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So today we titled the sermon, All Signs Point to Jesus. Well, I guess I titled the sermon, All Signs Point to Jesus. And well, hopefully we can kind of understand what that means a little bit more after we get through this sermon, but perhaps maybe you already have a idea of where we're going. But anyway, uh, just to pick up that theme, right? If we are uh, usually watching signs, we're usually on the road and we'll, well, that's what we are on the road of life. And hopefully we get a chance to see how things in our lives are constantly reminding us and pointing us to our God, pointing us to Jesus. So have you ever heard the phrase, stop and smell the roses? Probably not a bad thing to do in our life, lived in Christ for sure. And I checked out this uh, little brief description by Anna Zervakova that she wrote on her uh, website that's dedicated to this concept, Stop and Smell the Roses. So it is an idiom that means to relax, and you probably knew that, or to take some time out of one's busy schedule to enjoy or appreciate the beauty of life. Whether you are thinking of stopping to smell the roses as a metaphor or an actual act of admiring roses, the benefit is the same. You slow down and appreciate the world surrounding you. That is the message, after all, of what this idiom is all about. And I think for Trinity Sunday, this is certainly a time for us to stop and smell the roses. The Father, man, all of the beauty that he gives to you and to me in creation, the wonders of creation, all of the incredible animals that he has created in our world, the, the beauty of the different trees and produce and you name it, right? God's abundance of his creation is just marvelous, and he's given that to you and to me. And why? Like I told the preschool kids, why did God create the world? Well, because he loves us very much. And then the sun, the beauty of restoration. God's creation is suffering under the pains of sin, and we live in a world that's filled with turmoil. And the worst turmoil is what? that which is inside of us, that waging war that goes on in our body. Remember, like St. Paul said, the, the sin that we don't want to do, what's the way we keep on doing, and the good that we want to do, well, we struggle with trying to get that done. And of course, with the Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, He has restored us. He has forgiven us. He has made us new in Him. So our, our failures and our sins will never, ever be held against us because he, uh, because of his restoration power. And last but not least, right, the Holy Spirit, the one that fuels our life, lived in Christ by God's word, by his sacraments that he gives to you and me, by the encouragement of others that are around us, the Spirit working through all of these things to encourage you and me to live our life, well, to live our life the way that is intended by God for you and me to live. So which of these ideas is the hardest one to grab if we're thinking in terms of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and his work in creation, in restoration, and in our lives? My guess is that you are not always feeling like the Holy Spirit is pulsing vibrantly in your life. At least I know that that sometimes is the case with me. And if you pick the Father or the Son, well, that's fine, but this sermon's a little bit more leading us towards the idea of the Spirit. So track with me just a little bit here. This reminds me of this book, this exact point, <laughs> On the Road with St. Augustine, A Real World Spirituality for Restless Hearts. Perhaps maybe you can identify with that or identify with some of the words on page 54. But if the road has beat you down, if the sights have become predictable and tired, and there are nights when you look at your friends in the car and wonder, what the heck are we doing, or please just let me out, if you are weary from the chase, broken by the journey, 
tired of the disappointment, unsettled by a sense that you'd like to find some rest, not in accomplishment, but in welcome, then Augustine might be the stranger you could travel with for a while. Not because he's going to blow sunshine and tell you feel-good stories, and not because he's going to fast-track you to rest, beware of any religious types who roll up the roll up in a DeLorean promising time travel to either a nostalgic past or a pristine future, Augustine is the perfect guy for the road because he's been on it and is sympathetic to all our angsts on the way. Perhaps you can identify with that, and if you're tracking with this, uh, it, it almost connects back to our title of our sermon. All signs point to Jesus, because basically that's what he is pointing us back to in the book. And if you're looking for a good spiritual upbuilding walk, perhaps this book is for you for sure. But hopefully you're getting this, right? Uh, the, the, the spiritual life that you and I are on, uh, the, it, that is empowered by the Holy Spirit, is, is, is not about always having spiritual heights, because, well, we get that sometimes, for sure. And hopefully it's not a lot of spiritual lows because we certainly face those kind of things too. But when we're truly looking at a life lived in Christ, isn't it mostly just about living in the middle, the mundane? But even in the middle and in the mundane, that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is less in you and me helping us live this life because it often takes a lot out of us just living in the middle, right? Just living in the mundane. This is actually a major point in our pillar of living. Christ followers understand the freedom of living according to God's perfect plan. While the world promotes serving self, Christ followers live to selflessly serve those the Lord has placed in our lives including family, co-workers, peers, friends, and our church family. See, freedom is in knowing your purpose as God's child. The world certainly paints a different picture for what freedom is all about. And there are many roads that you can take to seek that freedom. But just remember this, any road that you see in front of your life, well, (laughs) that road has been paved by someone else that's already gone down that path and already tried that route. And more than likely, it's going to lead you someplace that's going to make you feeling empty. Like the idea of, I get to do whatever I want as being freedom. Well, selfish desires, simply all they do is make us slaves to ourselves. Luther writes this about a life lived in Christ, a life lived in the power of the Spirit. A Christian man is the most free Lord of all and subject to none. A Christian man is the most dutiful servant of all and subject to everyone. Although these statements appear contradictory, yet when they are found to agree together, they will do excellently for my purpose. Of course, that purpose that Luther is talking about is that purpose that you and I have in our lives as we live out our vocations, that is, our various callings, with the will of God in mind. See, these are the daily activities and behaviors that a Christ follower is meant to live. But even deeper than that, our daily activities and behaviors are are something that's very unique to us individually, to you and to me. See, no one has the exact same calling. Every single one of us has a unique calling in Christ that is empowered by the Holy Spirit to live our life for God. Whether it's in the highs, or whether it's in the lows, or whether it's right there in the middle, we are called by the Holy Spirit, to live our life in this way. 
And living in that groove, right, through the highs and the lows and the in-between, well, that's truly freeing for you and for me, knowing that we are hitting it out of the park when we're doing what God wants you and I to do. The only one we have to measure up to, well, is to God. The road we walk is to, is provided by our Creator, no doubt. And we see that in so many different ways, right? Our, our daily bread that we pray in the Lord's Prayer gives us a reminder of, of everything that is provided for you and for me. In our failures, we are always restored by our Savior, Jesus. That's just how it goes. We know that, well, God forgives and loves us each and every day. For the task that we receive in this life time and time again, because well, because we leak is that Holy Spirit that gets poured into our lives through reading God's Word, by coming to church to receive His gifts, and to be encouraged by one another, even through the highs and the lows, this is what it's all about. Always being in that moment in our Lord. Did you get to see and enjoy the northern lights? Let's be honest. This isn't the best photo of the Northern Lights that you probably saw. Certainly wasn't my high, and in fact, on this last time that the Northern Lights were shining bright, I saw on a Facebook post to a Minnesota Facebook posting place, some pictures that somebody took one mile north of Ortonville, Minnesota, and I'm like, that's where I used to live, and that's the first time that I saw the Northern Lights in all of their glory. How beautiful, certainly that was for sure. So this photo certainly wasn't my high, but I would venture to say it certainly wasn't my low either, like many experienced that, well, that the cloud cover killed any opportunity that they would have had to see that light for sure. But what made it cool was the possibility, right, of seeing it even here in Kansas City. And it was kind of fun as we sat back on the deck watching the northern lights come to life. Even though it wasn't the highs or the lows of seeing the northern lights for me, what was unique and cool was that God-given opportunity to be able to watch it that was uniquely mine, a gift from God. And what it made it special was not, well, was not just the viewing, but it was the company that God had given me to watch those northern lights with. After all, this is what it's all about, right? Being there for those that God has placed in our lives so that we can joyfully empower others to be Christ followers. Because after all, that is our purpose in this life. We are free, certainly but yet slave, like Luther said, to all, because that is our calling from God. And may this peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts He has blessed us with and entrusted to us for His kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize as St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. 
Here are some highlights from this week's Team Jesus News. Be sure to mark your calendars for our upcoming voters meeting on Wednesday, June 5th at 6.30 p.m. We'll be approving next year's budget, so make sure that you can come. We are trying to grow our Grief Share Ministry team. We need co-facilitators and also people who can provide other support by welcoming participants, providing refreshments, or helping with promotion. You can contact Deaconess Kim to learn more about Grief Share and about how you can be a part of this valuable ministry to our church and our community. And you can check this week's Team Jesus News to learn more about what's happening at St. Stephen. All right. Okay, so if the fish are going to come in over that way, we can put the we can put the ship over there and then I, ah, 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 stay right there stay right there don't come any closer don't come any closer no no go i got a rape ah. it's me gil it's me gil see gil yeah gil yeah what are you doing here and what are you doing in that well you, I'm getting all ready for VBS. <laughs> you said that the theme was scuba, so here I am. You're, you are <laughs> right, Gil. You did. You went all out. But a couple things. VBS isn't until June 23rd through the 27th, so you're a tiny bit early. And I think it might be hard to lead games in that suit with those flippers. Well, what do I need? <laughs> All you need to come to VBS is a sense of fun and adventure. The church is going to be swimming with kids, and they're all here to learn about friendship with God. It's going to be so great. Well, I'm under no pressure, but I don't think I need these. I don't think you do, but you're going to be as happy as a clam at VBS. I'm so glad that we're going to get to do that together, Gil. Me too. Me too. It's all going right. to be fun. Yeah. See you at VBS. Okay, see ya. Bye. Hello, my name is Claire McCoy, and I'm here today with Karen Johnson, and we would like to extend you a special invitation to all the women ages 19 and over to join us for a very special Gather Around the Tables event. We will be meeting this month off-site at Overflow Coffee House here in Liberty on Friday, May 31st. We have a wonderful evening planned with food and fellowship and a fun activity or two. So invite a friend to join us and come have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and learn what Gather Around the Tables is all about, women connecting with other women. Please be sure to grab a few invitation cards with you with all the details and share them with a friend or two, anyone in your community. We can't wait to see you there. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to so the words of the Athanasian Creed. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated the Holy Spirit uncreated, the Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite, the Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. 
and yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, and yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity none is before or after another. None is greater or less than, the, than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved.
Morning on our prayers. We want to remember Mary Atchison, who is in the hospital. Uh, also prayers for Audrey Lambert's co-worker that will be having surgery to remove cancer. Uh, his name's Brian. Also prayers of, uh, from Shelly Curtis. Her mom is uh, still struggling with her memory, uh, but no ongoing uh, cancer treatment is needed. Also Dominic, a student we've been praying for before. Um, he's uh, taking a daily chemo pill. He's doing well, just a little tired. And then also uh, her uncle John's treatment uh, is just getting a little bit too uh, intense. Uh, so um, they're going to just uh, continue to try to hold things steady. Uh, she's not exactly sure what all that means, but uh, just prayers for her uncle John. Also prayers for Linda Miller and her upcoming uh, doctor's appointments and treatments. Uh, prayers for Amy Strecker's uh, grandpa that has liver cancer and nearing the end of life. Also prayers for the Schultz family. Uh, this is an online uh, request, just prayers for this family. And then also um, from Audrey Lambert, just prayers for everybody for safe travels over the summer. And also, also an update from Anita Shaw, just uh, prayers uh, for her sister in law Rose. Um, she has uh, great care and treatment, so uh, she'll be heading home on May 18th. Um, also, uh, yeah, that those are our prayers for this Sunday. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh, Almighty God, on this day we confess the mystery of the faith of one God, yet three persons. And as we make this great confession of your truths that you have revealed to us in Scripture, let us never lose sight of the understanding that you are indeed beyond our comprehension. Help us each and every day, as you always do, to be empowered by your Spirit to understand what it means to be your child in this life and to conform our life to your will. Lord, we ask this for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician of body and soul, we thank and praise you for all who work with you to bring healing to the sick and relief to the suffering. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless all of our institutions that provide that healing and help them to do that according to your will. This day, we ask your blessing upon all those that we named in our prayers, including those that we named in our hearts right now. Lord, also we ask that you would be a comfort to all of those that have lost loved ones, especially during this Memorial Day season weekend. Lord, we give you thanks for the life that you have given to each and every single one of us, especially in this country and those that sacrificed that life for us. So be with those that are mourning the death of loved ones, whether it's from the recent storms or from past. Be our help at all times in life, and help us never lose focus on the real hope that we have in the resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for the gift of baptism as you put your name on us, and claim us and make us your children. In baptism, we daily receive all of the grace that we need to live our life for you. So this week, we give you thanks as we celebrate baptismal birthdays for Kara, James, James, Eli, Noah, Greg, Jack, Maury, Odin, Matt, Tanya, Heidi, Jim, and Daryl. We ask that you would continue to keep them in their baptismal promises and that you would continue to support all of us in the needs that we have in this life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage, and we ask that you would just continue to bless and keep all of our marriages in our congregation. This week we celebrate with Greg and Michelle, Jim and Sarah, Jared and Melinda, Jeff and Angie, Gary and Tina, and Michael and Courtney as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless their marriages and all of our marriages. And we also ask your blessings upon Alex and Cindy's wedding that will take place on this day. We pray that you would bless them with a wonderful day and safe travel for all their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Amen.